What's up guys, Instinct here and today we go over all the standard gear we use to do airsoft these days which will also function for Milsim purpose, hopefully in the near future. Before we go deeper into this stuff, don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell button. They may not seem that important to you guys, but for us it makes a huge difference since this enables us to keep going with our videos and help you guys out. So, today we'll go over the gear we carry going from top to toe with the exception of our belts, plate carriers and airsoft guns since we already made videos about them in the past. If you want to learn about that stuff, check out the playlist link in the description down below. Now, some of the products we'll mention today might be a bit on the pricey side for some of you guys but do notice that we're aiming towards those more professional Milsim events and we are gradually going through the process of getting the right knowledge, training and equipment. This also means that everything we use is from a genuine military or outdoor brand and not from some sort of airsoft brands. Except for the guns of course. And to be honest, we would never recommend airsoft branded equipment due to them mostly being too pricey in regards to the quality you get. As a matter of fact, this is sadly almost always the case in airsoft these days. It's like they say, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Now, if you guys are just starting with this hobby and need an explanation or guide about a more basic quality beginner's kit, we're planning to do some videos about that in the near future. So let us know in the comments down below if you guys want to see that sort of stuff as well. Now, let's begin with our basic kit for a normal outdoor, summer day or an indoor event. So let's start with the parts of our body that touches the ground, our feet. For starters, we use sport or outdoor socks because the fabrics absorb shocks and transfer sweat from your feet to your boots, shin bones and calves straight to the surrounding air. Why is that important? Because if you sport, your feet can sweat up to half a liter per foot per day. And feet that stay wet for long periods of time get blisters and wounds. And that's stuff we all want to avoid. Now, as for the boots themselves, we use the Loa Zephyr GTX Mid TF in Coyote, nearly since the beginning of our tactical adventures. For us, these boots comply to all the needs we expect for those outdoor terrains. So, we highly recommend these. Now, if you want to learn more details about tactical or outdoor boots, take a look at the playlist link in the description down below. Going up to our pants and underwear, since we're doing sportive activities, we carry running shorts as our underwear. These offer very good mobility without ripping and don't cause friction. Why is friction so important? Well, we both experienced some of those sweaty hot summer days where we burnt the skin off our thighs due to the friction of our normal cotton underwear. And we've gone through some very itchy days after that as well. Nevertheless, on top of that, we carry our Cry Gen 3 combat pants, which are absolutely amazing. If you can afford them and are serious about doing airsoft, we highly recommend them. And we sure won't be the only ones saying that. This of course has a valid reason as well. If we compare them to our old pants, there are a lot of differences. First off, cry pants are cut for a maximum mobility, meaning they have stretch panels on the knees, crotch and lower back. So if you take a knee or take an aggressive shooting stance or need to take in any other position, your pants won't limit your ability to move. If we compare that to our old pants, we would most likely rip them open if we would use them again which we obviously won't ever do. Now, these pants also feature a padded waistband for those heavy belts, an adjustable waist and 10 pockets of which the two cargo pockets conceal magazine stabilizers. These stabilizers have already proven us to come in very handy sometimes. Furthermore, we have the knee pads. In the very beginning, we had some of those cheap external pads with Velcro bands. And the thing with those is, whatever trick you apply, they rarely keep in place, so after those we immediately bought these Cry Airflex pads. Yes, that means we already had these before we bought our Cry pants, because they did fit in the knee pockets of our old airsoft pants. 
This already made a huge difference, especially when it came to the protection of our knees. But from time to time it was possible to kneel aside of the pad and that sometimes made us hit a branch or a rock, which wasn't really that comfy. Nowadays, when these pads are implemented in our cry pants, we can easily manually adjust them to both our knees. Also, the fabrics of which these are made are the Millspec 5050 Nyko Ripstop from Cordura, which offers an excellent tear and abrasion resistance and has a quick dry performance, which is a big difference compared to the polyester and cotton materials used for normal airsoft BDUs. Furthermore, we've heard from people that have done some far more cooler stuff than we've already done, which have had their pants for over 7 years. I'm sure you won't find any other airsoft reproduction that can hold on such a long time while doing crazy stuff. So in our eyes, that's money well spent. Next, we'll climb up to our shirts. We use the Cry Gen 3 combat shirts. Again, just like with the pants, these make a huge difference compared to the airsoft shirts. They feature bicep pockets, an iPro pocket, a pen holder and a zip collar that allows easy donning and doffing to keep the sling and straps from your neck. The torso is made of a flame resistant dry fire fabric and the sleeves are made from a 5050 Nyko ripstop just like the pants. These are obviously also specifically designed to be worn under body armor and keep us cool with wicking during the action. If we compare that to our old airsoft shirts which were made from cotton and polyester we sometimes came home with burns due to the friction of the fabrics against our skins. Again, not that comfy to have. One of the things we don't wear inside of these shirts are the elbow pads, because for us it's very rarely these things are needed for what we do. So next, why do we have our pants and shirts in Multicam? Well, like the word itself says, Multicam can be widely used in lots of different environments. If you go in both a green and a brown environment, it very quickly blends in. But why don't you guys have multicam carriers then? Well, that's because already a very wide variety of people are somewhat multicam freaks. And we want it to be recognizable and distinguishable in the field. This so we can spot each other very quickly without being less effective when it comes to camouflage. So, if you see two guys operating together, while one is wearing OD and the other one is wearing Coyote, it will most likely be us. Next, we'll go over to our gloves. We use the Mechanics Specialty Vent Covert Gloves. We've had other thicker and more protective Mechanics gloves as well in the past, but for us personally, when it comes to shooting, we like them to be as thin as possible, because that allows for a very sensitive trigger feel and makes a huge difference during shooting. Of course, these replace a degree of protection, but as long as they protect our hands against abrasion, that's enough for us. These gloves are also designed to keep our hands cool with the use of a fully ventilated design. And above that, they're also touchscreen capable to keep us connected with you guys in the field. So going from our hands to our wrists, on our left side we have both a Casio G-Shock Rangeman. Anyone who owns a G-Shock will agree that these things are built to last. And if you are looking for a watch for any sort of outdoor activity, we can highly recommend the G-Shock watches. This specific one is a transmitter controlled, charges by solar energy and features a thermometer, an altitude meter, a barometer, a compass and a stopwatch. It is water resistance up to 20 bars. Now, if you follow us for a while, you've probably noticed that we carry our watch on the inside of our wrists. This has to do with three reasons. Number one, it is more unlikely to get shot on the inside than the outside of your wrist. This avoids that someone doesn't destroy our rather expensive watches. Number two, bumping your watch against a wall or an object is very rare when wearing it on the inside of your wrist. And number three, when holding a weapon you are more likely to bend your hand to the outward side which mostly pushes against your watch and limits your movement. When wearing it on the inside of your wrist, you don't have to deal with this. Next, on our right wrist, we both carry a paracord wristband. You would think that's just for the looks, but no. Everything we carry has a function. If not, we wouldn't be wearing it at all. The reason for this is also very simple. 
because Paracord has a wide variety of functions. So if we need any for whatever reason, we'll have that with us as well. Okay, next, we'll go to our faces. Let's start with the most important thing we all need to do airsoft, our ballistic safety glasses. For this, I wear the Asset Gambit glasses from Edge Tactical Eyewear, and my brother uses the Edge Overlord glasses. We both have them with clear and dark lenses for both normal environments and bright sunny days. But why do we both wear a different design? Well, that's because everybody's face is different. And to provide the correct protection, we each needed another design. Furthermore, these glasses are CE, ANSI and MCEPS rated. They have a 3 layer degree anti scratch coating and are polarized. But what makes these truly shine is their military graded vapor shield technology, which cannot be compared with any other sort of anti fog technology. We once tested these by holding them above boiling water and they didn't fog at all. So, for the guys looking to solve their fog problem, Edge Tactical Eyewear is your solution. If you want to learn everything about ballistic eyewear, you can take a look at the playlist link in the description down below. Next, we'll go to lower face protection or teeth protection. For this, we both wear a mesh mask with straps, which needed some adjustments to fit our individual faces. We used to have those partial mesh, partial fabric ones as well, but we've sweated like pigs wearing those. So for now, we'll keep on doing what we're doing with the full mesh ones. Next, we'll go over to our headwear. For this, I wear a hat from Condor, and my brother uses a boonie hat from Cry Precision. Yes, in multicam, of course. So, we wear these to conceal our heads in the natural environments and to carry our GoPros on our heads for the first person footage in the field. To mount my GoPro, I cut a gap in my hat to wear it with the GoPro head strap mount. As for the back, I have attached some Velcro to keep my power bank cable going to my backpack in place. My brother made use of the structured brim and an extra piece of strap on top to mount his GoPro with the head strap mount as well. The head strap mount did need some minor adjustments though. For his power bank cable, he just loops it through the rim towards the back. Now, when it comes to the GoPro itself, we use the Hero 5 session because it's small, lightweight, waterproof and provides a good quality for such a small device. To protect our GoPros, we currently use the lens protector made by Shapeways. These require a Lexan glass insert. Although the glass is strong enough to protect the lens, the protector itself isn't strong enough to take a BB impact. Both of our protectors have been shot already and the material they're made of just cracks on impact. So we don't recommend these and we're on the look for something more reliable. Now for us hardcore players facing more shitty, cold and wet weather days, we add or replace some equipment to all the stuff we just mentioned. For those wet and muddy days, we usually wear water resistant gaiters from Tasmanian Tiger, also in Multicam. These protect our pants and boots against water and mud. Now, for our boots, that means less time to clean the mud off. And above that, they allow us to go in water up to almost knee height, without getting wet feet. Another thing we wear for those colder and rainy days is a jacket. We wear the Helicontex Gunfighter jacket which was designed for military purpose, not in multicam. This jacket is cut to maximize movement capability. It protects us against wind, light rain and dirt and still maintains high breathability. It has 7 pockets and ventilation zippers all around to keep us cool when required and features a color stout hood which can be quickly deployed. For those colder days, we usually also wear extra layers of clothing beneath the jacket. This mostly is a t-shirt and a fleece to keep us a bit warmer. So, furthermore, for the future, we're planning to get a helmet with Ear Pro, but we'll have to figure some other stuff out like combining such a helmet with Face Pro for example. Don't forget to participate in our monthly giveaways, we always have some cool quality stuff to make at least one of you guys happy. You can participate on our social media and through reekinbrothers.com. Let us know what camo pattern you prefer in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe, like and hit that bell button. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next week.